Hello everyone, this is Chris with Highline Custom Electric Guitars. In this video I want to show the techniques that I use for leveling and dressing frets. In order to simplify the process of leveling and dressing the frets, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that the fretboard has an accurate radius of curvature. You also want to make sure that the fret wire has been installed flat to the surface of the fretboard. You don't want any part to be sticking out of the slot. To begin the process of leveling the frets, I start by adjusting the truss rod. Some people prefer their necks to be absolutely dead flat. I prefer to have a little bit of up bow, which helps to reduce string buzz, especially if I adjust the bridge to have a very low action. Now, if you want to add a little up bow like I do, it's important to measure the amount. That way, later on, when you string up the guitar, you can adjust the truss rod to reproduce the same amount of up bow that you had when you leveled and dressed the frets. I do this using a notched straight edge. I place the straight edge along the center line of the fretboard and then adjust the truss rod until I see a gap start to form at the center of the fretboard. I'll use a set of feeler gauges to measure the amount of that gap and then I'll record this for use later on. After adjusting the truss rod, I'll mask off the fretboard to protect it from the dust that will be generated during the leveling process. If you fail to do this, you'll ruin the fretboard. Some guys like to use a long sanding block to level all the frets at the same time. If you do it that way, you have to recrown every single fret, which takes a lot of time. I prefer to work on only the frets which are a problem. I like to use a set of short straight edges, which allow me to check three frets at a time. I'll set the straight edge across three frets and move it from one side of the fretboard to the other. If the straight edge remains flat against those three frets as I move it across the fretboard, I'll know that they're level with respect to one another. If the straight edge starts to rock at any point, I'll know that the center fret has a high spot that needs to be addressed. I use a crowning tool to grind down only the high spot itself rather than working the entire fret. I'll keep checking my progress with the straight edge until it stops rocking. Now it's important to understand that when you use this technique, you're not moving three frets at a time down the fretboard. You're checking three frets, but you're actually moving one fret at a time. That way you can check the height of each fret as it relates to the ones right next to it. I like to use three different size straight edges, a long and a medium and a short. That way I can check the frets as they're moving closer together towards the heel. Once I have finished leveling the frets, and this method only takes a few minutes, I'm ready to dress the edges. I like my fret edges to be rounded over. And the way I do it is I use my crowning tool and I simply start grinding and then angling the tool as I round it over. This is a very fast way to do it. And I like the way it looks when it's done. To finish the job, I like to use a three-sided file to get those little edges where the fret wire meets the fretboard. Even though I use a diamond-coated fret crowning tool, it still leaves scratches in the fret. To get rid of those scratches, I like to use an old flat crowning tool and wrap it with some 600 grit wet-dry sandpaper. Then I can sand the frets that I was working on to remove those scratches and get them ready for a final polish. I use a buffing machine with a wheel dedicated to polishing frets. This is an option because you can get a nice finish just by simply using some super fine steel wool. And there you have it, a beautiful fret job in far less time than you might have imagined.